In this lecture, we are going to examine the timeline of ancient Mesopotamia. So we will start right at the very beginning, the prehistoric period. And this is exactly what it means, a period before written history. The beginning of ancient Mesopotamia really starts at the end of the last glacial period, around 12,000 years ago. During the glacial period, the world was a very inhospitable place. The expansion of vast ice sheets led to a large drop in sea levels, which in turn made the world extremely cold and dry. This also resulted in the expansion of deserts. The reduction in rainfall led to diminished vegetation. All of this, of course, makes it very difficult to start large-scale civilizations that we see after 10,000 BC. So after the retreat of the glaciers, we see the first beginnings of civilization. And of course, ice is not the only variable involved in allowing for human advancement. The movement away from hunter-gathering is also fundamental. People were not spending all of their time foraging for wild plants and pursuing feral animals. Instead, humans were beginning to settle down and started to domesticate plant species and animals. As I mentioned earlier, some of the first complex civilizations developed in Mesopotamia. Most of the Mesopotamian civilizations were centered on the alluvial plain that developed between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. This plain developed as a result of alluvial sediment that built up as these two mighty rivers drained from the mountains down into the Persian Gulf. Now there are two main characteristics of these early civilizations. First is the domestication of plant species. The two main plant species involved were grasses, specifically wheat and barley. The second characteristic is the herding and domestication of animals. The three most significant early animals domesticated were sheep, goats, and cattle. Now Mesopotamian prehistory mostly occurred in the Neolithic period, which is the final division of the Stone Age. The earliest era in Mesopotamian prehistory is the pre-pottery period, and as you probably guessed, this is a time period before pottery was invented, at least in this region of the world. The pre-pottery period itself can be divided into two main subdivisions. The pre-pottery A period, which lasts from around 10,000 to 8,700 BC, and the pre-pottery B period, which lasts from around 8,700 to 6,800 BC. The A period sees the first beginnings of agriculture, but there is still a heavy reliance on a hunter-gatherer diet. It isn't until the pre-pottery B period where domestication of animals becomes more prevalent along with agriculture. After the pre-pottery B era, we enter into a period known as the Pottery Neolithic. This began around 6400 BC, and soon after we can see distinctive cultures that can be identified by their pottery. In fact, during the prehistoric period, pottery is extremely important. Many of the civilizations are separated through differences in pottery since it is one of the primary artifacts uncovered through archaeology. One of the earliest Mesopotamian cultures identified through its pottery is the Halaf culture. The Halaf period existed primarily from 6100 BC to 5100 BC. The culture originated in the north. The period is named after the site of Tel Halaf, which was excavated in the early 20th century. Buildings were usually constructed out of mud brick. Other circular buildings have been excavated as well. The Halaf pottery was highly distinctive and is considered some of the finest pottery produced during the prehistorical period of ancient Mesopotamia. It was often produced by specialists who used geometric and animal motifs. The Halaf people also used tools made of stone and clay. The Ubayid period is the next significant prehistoric time frame in Mesopotamia. The name derives from Tel al-Ubayid, where the earliest excavation of Ubayid material was conducted. The Ubayid pottery shows clear differences from the earlier Halaf pottery. Ubayid culture is also characterized by larger village settlements. Also, some of the first public temples begin to appear. Villages likely contain specialized laborers and craftspeople. The bulk of the population, as always, would have been focused on agriculture. The Ubayid culture spread across Mesopotamia to many other villages and settlements. There is also evidence of sailing during this period. This indicates that sailing existed in the latter stages of the Stone Age. It has been suggested that a trade relationship might have existed between the Ubayid settlements and Arabian villages, and perhaps there also existed a vibrant pottery trade between these communities. So the Ubayid culture was very important as we see shared pottery types along with similar architectural plans. Although the Ubayid period consists mainly of small villages, 
There were some cities as well. The most prominent was Iridu, which is thought to have had a population of several thousand people. After the Ubayid period comes the Uruk period. This transition often leads to one of the greatest controversies concerning ancient Mesopotamia, the so-called Sumerian problem, which relates to the origin of Sumerian civilization. The region of Sumer is located in southern Mesopotamia. It was initially believed that the Sumerians were the first people to populate this region. But more and more archaeologists are convinced the first settlers were not Sumerians at all, but rather the people from the Ubayid culture. And so essentially there are two schools of thought here. First, that the Sumerians were the founders of the earliest culture of Lower Mesopotamia. Or it was in fact the Ubayids who were the first to inhabit the region. In any event, the first distinctive Sumerian culture begins in the Uruk period, which again came after the Ubayid era. The Uruk civilization lasted roughly from 4400 to 3100 BC. The period is named after the city of Uruk, which was one of the earliest cities in Mesopotamia, and for that matter, the world. The Uruk era saw the development of more and more larger cities, which is a huge transition away from the Ubayid period, which was dominated by villages. So during the Uruk period, we see many smaller settlements combine into larger cities. The city of Uruk itself was characterized by a very high population. At its height, it's believed the route contained around 50,000 to 90,000 residents, making it the largest city in the world at that time. Uruk was located in a very favorable geographic location near the Euphrates River. A canal system was constructed throughout the city, connecting it to the economically important Euphrates River. Easy access to the river allowed the city to establish trade routes to other settlements. Also, the surrounding area supported a wide variety of edible plants. This led to Uruk's growth in population and territory. Extensive excavation of Uruk has revealed the importance of the city as one of the first true cities in human history. A large stone temple was discovered that was enclosed by a limestone wall, and it is thought to be a connection to earlier Ubayid temple architecture. The fact the temple is separated from the city gives temples an added importance within Uruk culture. The temple is possibly the earliest water cult in Mesopotamia. Another larger stone temple was also discovered. It was dedicated to the goddess Inanna, who was associated with love and beauty. These massive temples are certainly symbolic of Uruk's tremendous growth. At its height, Uruk encompassed an area of six kilometers. Tablets with writing on them have also been discovered at Uruk. This is quite possibly the earliest writing in human history. Uruk's prominence also allowed it to spread the concept of urbanization throughout Mesopotamia. This has been referred to as the Uruk expansion. So as I mentioned before, there was a shift away from small agricultural villages to larger and larger cities. And with that, these larger cities offered a greater degree of specialization in terms of labor and craftspeople. Uruk's colonies eventually became large cities in their own right, sometimes even larger than Uruk. This made it increasingly difficult for Uruk to maintain control over these cities. Still, Uruk's colonization efforts helped to spread Sumerian culture, pottery, architecture, and religion. The Uruk era was eventually displaced by the Gem Day Nasser period. It is generally dated from around 3100 to 2900 BC. It is around this time frame that the Bronze Age began in Mesopotamia. This brought huge improvements to agriculture, as bronze tools were much more reliable than stone and copper tools. Bronze also greatly improved weapons and armor. So, in the next period, we are going to cover the early dynastic period in Mesopotamia.